Our commencement speaker is Sean Welcome, Orlando's Poet Laureate, who has traveled the world speaking, performing, and facilitating writing and performing arts workshops. Sean uses his gift with words to inspire, entertain, encourage, and educate the world around him. He is the founder and host of Diverse Word, the longest running weekly open mic in Central Florida. He has crafted commercials for the NBA's Orlando Magic and provided creative consultation to organizations that include the Orlando Philharmonic Orchestra, the Edith Bush Institute for Philanthropy and Nonprofit Leadership, the One Pulse Foundation, UCF, Valencia College, and Full Sail University. He has also curated multiple educational poetry experiences for the Dr. Phillips Center for the Performing Arts, Bethune-Cookman University, 33rd Street Jail, and many public schools in Orange County. As a poet laureate in Central Florida, Sean has been interviewed on national public radio and other notable media outlets. He earned a bachelor's degree in English literature from UCF and is a master's candidate in soci sociology at the university. He lives in Orlando with his wife, Jana, and is a father to fi there are five children. Please join me in a warm welcome for Sean Welcome. Thank you. And graduates, please show your appreciation. When that first refugee Olympic team took to the streets of Rio in 2016, global reception was warm. With no national anthem prepared for the podium, I wonder if the athletes would have just closed their eyes and sang their favorite song. Outside looking in, they already won. 1916. That's the year my great-grandmother was born. Border in one country north of those same summer games is Guyana. It's where both sides of my family's from. Her name's Hyacinth Bourne. And even Bolt's 100-yard dash can't compare to the 100 years crossed last November. So many memorable stories to share, but I'll hold on because this poem would be too long. And I don't like people looking at me like, are you done? <laughs> She's no refugee, but the similar sentiments got me thinking about legacy and milestones and how important it is to celebrate checkpoints of accomplishment coupled with flowers for those still alive to smell them. Although magic moments seem to be seldom, consider this, that Olympic team of 10 competed in track and judo and swimming, treading water, running, and fighting are behaviors fitting of those fleeing war-torn countries. Turning tragedy to triumph requires resilience, mentally accepting delayed gratification, and the kind of brilliance becoming of my granny, those surgeries were multiple and major. She'd still memorize every mother and dog's phone number and their neighbors, brains sharp like lasers, faith in God got family fused from the old school. But look, rumor has it, Granny be on Facebook, <laughs> posting inspirational quotes from DJ Khaled. Can you imagine what it must be like to survive a hundred? or to go from refugee camp to running in the 800. This is about legacy. We all have a race to run on a world stage, and it looks different for everyone. Let me paraphrase Einstein before I'm done. If you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing it is dumb or somehow less. This isn't about what you can't do, my friends. It's a question of how you function best and what, if not who, were you designed to bless between birth and death dates. Legacy is built upon the dashes. It's custom made, maybe memorable, definitely matchless run. Let the breeze brush off the heat of the sun. Add to that legacy, make it a great one. Mark every milestone to the sound of an angelic chorus 
And if you ever get discouraged while running long distances, remember to reflect on the legends who blaze trails, cracked and shattered glass ceilings who are seated before us. That was a poem that I wrote primarily to celebrate the life and legacy of my great grandmother who hit a major milestone of living past the age of 100. She actually passed away at 103. Uh, but I thought it fitting to share that particular performance with you all tonight because a legacy like hers and the impact she's had on our family reminds me of the central theme of my message, which is this the power of consistency. And there's a quick story about my teeth that I have to share with you all tonight before I close. President Cartwright, Provost Johnson, faculty and guests, it is a great honor and privilege to be a UCF Knight, an alumnus of the College of Arts and Humanities, Poet Laureate for the city of Orlando, and to be invited to share a few words of inspiration to the graduating class of 2023. Let's make some noise! Let's go! <laughs> if there's one principle, if there's one principle that I've found most fruitful in my journey to success, it's this, the power of consistency, the power of consistency. When I started my weekly open mic night for poets and artists in 2006 at Dandelion Community Cafe, I didn't know then that it would be the longest running open mic in Orlando nearly 17 years later, now located at downtown Credo. I didn't know then that our city's mayor would open up a position within government for poetry and storytelling to be represented called a poet laureate. And I certainly didn't know that the consistent commitment to hosting and performing would lead to me becoming a full-time poet and professional speaker with the support of a national network of other like-minded speakers through the Next Level Speakers Academy. I am living my dream and my personal journey, thank you, and my personal journey is still evolving. In retrospect, I'm really just doing a more matured version of the same thing I was doing at 17 years old my senior year of high school, which was scribbling rap lyrics on a piece of paper like this and performing for my friends. And I just turned 40 a couple weeks ago. <laughs> the power of consistency. So here's the story. There was a dentist by the name of Dr. Debbie Titus who saw me perform poetry and speak a few times and thought to herself, I would love to fix his teeth. <laughs> now, I, I did have uh, some crowding. Uh, I didn't think it was that bad, but you know, she's a, a, a dentist, so her perspective is a little different from mine. Uh, and honestly, I don't even know how she got my number, uh, but I remember getting a text that said something to the effect of, hey, Sean, uh, my name is Dr. Debbie. Uh, I love your work. Uh, I hope you don't take this the wrong way, but I'd love to fix your teeth <laughs> for free. Like, dang, you know, that's kind of harsh. Anyway, um, now, now, I did, I did pay uh, lab costs, like what it cost her, but she didn't charge me for the work because she was familiar with the traditional like train track style of, of braces, but not so much with the newer technology uh, at the time of Invisalign braces. These, all right, so, sorry. I know it's a little gross, I'm sorry. Um, and and so, she, so she wanted to practice with a few patients before charging me full price. Uh, so I was down, of course, but I was completely ignorant uh, as to how braces work. Like I thought it was some kind of surgery and it was all complicated. Uh, I had no clue. But now having gone through the process, I realized it wasn't deep or complicated at all. What I realized is that in order for your teeth to be straightened, and into alignment, it requires two things. 
time and pressure. That's it. All dental braces really do is apply pressure on the teeth that need adjusting over an extended period of time. Which brings me to this conclusion as it relates to the power of consistency. Time plus pressure equals transformation. Time plus pressure equals transformation. Graduating class of 2023, if you want to transform your life and the community you serve, you must have consistent impact. Yes, like my great grandmother. I am her legacy, and you have an opportunity to build yours, but it can't be done without consistent impact. Some people do something over a long period of time, but there's not enough impact or pressure that leads to transformation. Or some people have big impact, but only for a short period of time. It truly is a combination of the two, time and pressure that leads to real transformation. Now. How does that apply to your context? What is it that you can do forever? And what do you do that seems to have the most impact? Only you know the answers to those questions, but I've seen it work in my own life. And the dream of my heart for you as you move forward towards your personal and professional goals is that you would remember the principles that will transform your life and the lives you touch for the better. I'm proud of you. Keep building your legacy. Be consistent. Apply pressure. Go nights. Charge on. Charge on. Charge on. Thank you so much, Sean. Thank you for sharing your gift, for sharing your memory of your great-grandmother, and for sharing your appliance from your mouth. <laughs> I'll always remember that. Uh, but fabulous. It was fabulous. Thank you so much.